Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So here we are with a, a review here of a new release from Airfix. So this is the Supermarine Spitfire uh, F Mark 22. So this is a Griffin Spitfire. It's a bit different as you start moving into the, the Griffins. Um, they change from Roman numerals and things like that. So um, and we also get into a bit of post-war stuff. So we get slightly different markings in the way the schemes, the schemes happen and the kind of coding underneath. But at the crux of it, this is still a, a Spitfire. So there we go. We've got two marking options here. Uh, we've got um, the first one, which is the standard grey and green, and that's 1949 Cheshire, England, uh, number 613 squadron uh, of the Royal Auxiliary Air Force. And then the second scheme is number 603 squadron, sit in the city of Edinburgh, um, and that's... Uh, obviously based in Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland, July 1950. And this is the air, air, one of the aircraft that took part in the um, Cooper Trophy, Trophy race of 1950. I'm tripping over my tongue. But there we go. Now, into the box. Uh, this was not... This isn't the kit I bought. This is a kit my friend bought, gave to me to review. And in the meantime, <clears throat> I really didn't take that long. But in the meantime, he's bought another one, and um, my plan is uh, to build this one and uh, give it back to him, really, Bill. So I've got the information here. Um, he bought this off of the Airfix website. Uh, the kit was $11.99, post and packaging $3.95 for a total of $15.94 uh, once the VAT was added. Good old Great Britain. So we've got cartograph decals, nice set of instructions, and a bag full of sprues. So we're going to start with the instructions and typical, well, is that, I say typical stuff, it's actually not typical stuff. Uh, Airfix instructions have come along a bit further uh, than this now, uh, but this shows um, an important detail. So this is not a new kit. This was originally, I should have looked it up on Scalemates, anyone can, but I believe it's a 2012 release, this one. And this is now a re-release of it. So it just means that it's a slightly older tooling. And for that, you get the older type of instructions. Uh, nowadays, you get more sort of CAD rendering. And um, so here, the bits that are moving would be in red. As you move to the next one, the bits, if it's talking about the bits you just used, like here, it would be the same colour. And it moves on a bit more of a sensible sequence. However, we all know what we're dealing with here, so it's simple enough to check out. So we've got, first off, five-bladed propeller. Uh, comes with the old Griffin engine. We've got a decal for the instrument panel and a nice rendition of a Spitfire cockpit in 172nd. I would, uh, you know, I would argue that's okay. We've got the um, armour for the behind the seat and we've got the, the main bulkhead you can see, gear stick, a few separate things. So I'm sure it's plenty, along with the sidewall detail that we also get. Uh, in 172nd. Very quick stuff as we go on through, same old thing. So your propeller sw spins, you get the cockpit done in the one side of the fuselage, pinch your propeller between the two joining, then you can spin it and go woo as you fly along. And then you get the tailplane going on. Looks like quite serious um, joins there. I'm hoping there's no issue. And by that, I mean there's, there's like the fairing is built into it as well. So that should give you good mounting. And then we're straight into the, the wings going on with the upper and lower parts of the wing. Um, they're joining on as well. So then we've got the gun barrels, things going on underneath. So we've got the uh, intakes and um, oil coolers and all that sort of stuff. Landing gear, up or down, good old air fix, canopy on, and we're into the paint. Then we've got a nice, uh, well, one of the big things that will have come out of this is, I would imagine the original release perhaps might not have had cartograph decals, or if it did, it certainly didn't have the good ones that we've got now. Not that there's ever been bad ones, but you know what I mean? They've got better and better. And um, the marking schemes have greatly improved. They almost improve of every single air fits kit. Uh, so there we've got, um, trying, very tempted to call this one rat, which I'm sure it was. Um, and we've got stencil data as well, all the way through this, which is lovely to see. Lots of detail there with all the markings on. And then we go over the page, not that way, this way, and we've got a bare metal finish. And then this is the uh, racer, and that's nice as well. So it's it's important to point out that the um, 
The bands on the fuselage, both sky and red, are on the uh, decal sheet. So if you want to go that way, you don't need to worry about masking up. Um, as we've talked about it, let's get straight into the, uh, the decals. So what we've got here is common decals. This is ones that are used on both schemes. And then we've got uh, the separate scheme. So this is all for scheme A, the gray and green one. And this is all for scheme B, with this being the uh, the line, being the border here. And then that's your different roundels, much later roundels there, as you can see. Um, at the, well, you know, what can you say? Fantastic reg uh, registration, no carrier film, that, you know, visible. They're just, it's, you think they've got as good as they can get, and then they get better. Fantastic. They're a joy to use. You know what you're going to get, you know how it's going to work, and it's a pleasurable experience, which isn't always the case with decals. So let's get into the bag. Thankfully, the clear parts have been put into their own bag, but it is all still jumbled together. So there we've got the bubble canopies and the windscreen. Uh, they look crystal clear, actually. I'm not going to get them out because, you know, the, the longer you can keep them like that, the better. But I believe one's for open, one's for closed. So that's that. And then we get into the sprues. So we've got three sprues like that. I did think that the uh, surface d detail looks extremely good on these. Let's just get a bit of light on there. There you can see the panel lining. I don't think that's too bad for the scale. Nice fastener detail around the um, fairing there and the cowling. Can't see any short shot at the minute. Nice crisp detail, no flash. Doesn't look a problem at all. Looks very nice. Bit of a blobby pilot, but we won't be using him anyway. This is the other side. Again, very nice. You can see how thin the side walls are. And that's the internal detail. I mean, it's a bit blocky. That's showing up as being rather over the top and we've got a break in the crossbar uh, crowbar there but ultimately it's good enough uh got the exhaust there should be easy enough to hollow out them being round sort of tube exhaust uh, the guns there look very nice probably replace these bits with just a little bit of um tubing that's appropriate to scale again no flash no annoying ejector pin marks from where i can see Weighted wheels, always nice to have those. And then we've got the uh, wing detail as well. Bit of rough texture there. Probably wants just buffing buffing back a bit. You can see just in the light there, I'll just use the sanding stick just to try and take that back a little bit and see if we can see the difference. Yeah, there you go, see? Sort of polished it. So we've got roughness. We'll look at specifically this panel. A bit of texture and then we just go over on the other side just with a light polishing well polishing but it's a it's a very well worn thousand it's probably behaving more like a 2000 now and there you can see it's taken that right out so it's a job of a couple minutes to do that no problem and using something soft like this like a sponge isn't gonna round off any of this it shouldn't be enough to do anything to it just go over it like that and it should once you rub off all the dust bring it right down we've got the one main piece of wing there as well and we've got some nice rivet detail running underneath i mean you can't really ask for more out of an airfix 172nd kit um you you know we are getting some state-of-the-art kits now in 172nd but i think this one's holding up there it's going to look like a very nice model once completed so yeah i mean i'm impressed with that uh you know i'm not going to say whether i recommend it or not but i think it looks like a nice enough kit and there's something about the red box the cartograph decals um the two marking options that just sort of scream nostalgia as well which all add to the effect and that's what we like to do when we build models we like to get immersed remember what we did when we were kids i think this one is um, worthy of uh, 
of a nice build. So there we go, that's a review. I'll let you make your own mind up whether you like what you see there and if you think it's uh, worth going out and grabbing. But that's a new release out now. It came out in August and i um, very impressed. I will give it a build and we'll bring it to the channel. So as always guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. There's a link to um, a couple of ways you can support the channel, Patreon and PayPal down below. Uh, as always, do leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.